There are many creatures that are called God because God means mighty one. Was Charles Taze Russell a Freemason? If we go to the heraldmag.org website and we click on online Bible and we click on Russell and we go down to convention reports sermons and we download a PDF there we come up with this document that documents that Charles Taze Russell said I am a Freemason I am a free and accepted Mason if I carry the matter out to its full length because that is what our Masonic brethren like to tell us now this document proves that Charles Taze Russell was a Freemason but are there other evidences that prove that Charles Taze Russell was a Freemason if we look at this website of Duncan's Masonic Ritual and Monitor this is a website that has all the documentation on Freemason hand signs here we see that there is a hand sign called second sign of a mark master and we see that the palm is laid open bare and the hand is coming down as if it were a chopping block Duncan's monitor describes this hand sign as after having completed the sign as just described drop the right hand a little to the right side about as high up as the waist the palm opened and horizontal and at the same time lift up the left hand and bring it down edgewise and vertically upon the wrist of the right this is figure 21 which is what we're looking at here now if we look at an old video by Charles Taze Russell here we'll see him doing this hand sign and at the 22 second mark we'll stop it and you'll see what's there The remainder of Park Third is deeply interesting. The teaching, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Truly, never man speaks like this man. So there you saw it. He's doing the Freemasonic hand sign, but he's using the left hand instead of the right hand. Now we could say that this is the internal lodge hand sign and this would be what they do when they're outside of the lodge there's an inner order and an outer order of things of doing things with the masons so let's look at that again never man. so you can see him chopping down right where the wrist is as you see over here like this man. and he actually pauses his finger or his chopping like hand right there right on the wrist you can see it there and that's really where you want to actually do it in order for it to be legitimate so here he's giving the actual Freemasonic hand sign now there's another one down here towards the end here you see him doing another hand sign that's very similar to another Freemasonic sign of the fellow craft hand sign that's done by masons when they put their hand across their belly and they kind of twist their their hand down but now we want to describe what is this that Jehovah's Witnesses believe in and what is it that Russell was trying to accomplish well if you understand there's an old Christian heresy called Arianism and here it says that modern Christian groups that may be seen as espousing some of the principles of Arianism include Unitarians, Oneness Pentecostals, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Jehovah's Witnesses, Iglesia Ni Cristo, and Brahmanism. And the reason why these cults here are Arian is because Arianism was discussed at the First Council of Nicaea and it was banished from the church at that time because it demoted Jesus Christ into a created being. What the Freemasons like to do is they like to 
demote Jesus Christ because the pure doctrine of masonry is believing in a plethora of gods in Gnostic cosmology. And so in order to promote this ancient revival of the mystery religions, as they call it, they have to bring the deity of Jesus down into a form of Arianism. Again, Arianism is the cult doctrine that says Jesus Christ was a created being. And so therefore that means that he is not eternal God. And since he's not eternal God, he can be a created savior. And that's how the Gnostic Masons think about themselves. They are, quote, little gods that are saving the world through their work that they're doing. And so the secret doctrine is that they think themselves initiates as little gods. And that's why they want to bring Jesus Christ down into this demiurgic Arian heresy. Now, is there any connection to the later movements of Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, Rutherford, who we could see in this picture right here, who's sitting with Charles Taze Russell. Here's Rutherford sitting in front of Russell. Rutherford later developed a book called The Finnish Mystery. He actually edited that book and it was actually compiled by Clayton Woodruff and George H. Fisher and edited by Russell successor Joseph Franklin Rutherford. And this book was classically where we see this picture here where as it is very documented even on the tomb of Charles Taze Russell that the cross and crown Masonic symbol is what they promote. The original document is actually here and it comes from this book again called Finished Mystery and you can see it right here at the very beginning. And this is the book that was compiled and later edited by Rutherford who was one of the heads as it says here, Rutherford had become one of the seven directors of the Watchtower Society when Russell died in October 31st of 1916. He joined Vice President Alfred First Ritchie and Secretary Treasurer William E. Van Ambra. And so we could see that this document here was later promoted by those in the Watchtower Society. And so this gives a direct link to the doctrine that Russell invented and later Rutherford compiled. It says here that Rutherford purchased the first three volumes of Charles Taze Russell's Millennial Dawn series of Bible study textbooks from two coloporters who visited his office, who then viewed all religions as insincere, shallow, and hypocritical. So they went and promoted this Gnostic doctrine within the Jehovah's Witnesses of demoting Jesus Christ into the Arian heresy. Now when we think about the Jehovah's Witnesses, we think why would Freemasons start this religion? We know that as we've looked at the Mormons and we've seen the Seventh-day Adventists, that most of these cults started by these Masons are to bring this Gnostic cosmology into play for their new world order. And that's why the translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses is called New World Translation. You see here, it very clearly says that it's part of the New World Order, or we could say it's a New World Order translation. And in this translation, what does it facilitate? It facilitates the demoting of the deity of Jesus Christ, that he is eternal. They've changed everything in this Bible, we couldn't even call it a Bible, but they've changed everything and are facilitating the heresy of Arianism in the form of Gnostic cosmology by saying that Jesus Christ is a created being. He's a lesser God. And that opens the door to Gnosticism's idea that there are many gods and not just one triune, eternal, co-equal, triune God. And so that's why this 
whole system of the New World Order, masonry and everything, has put out these false cults. Now, we found this testimony by this YouTube user named XJWS1, and he gives a real good description. Here he is at the pyramid that was made by the Masons to, quote, honor the Jehovah's Witness founder, Charles Taze Russell. And if we see here, there's a huge Masonic Lodge here, and we can see that the actual pyramid structure is right here. These are some photos up close that we'll see in the video coming up. And there's the Masonic Lodge. Here is the pyramid, and this is where they say Russell is buried, actually. But as we documented Russell doing the hand signs and now we're going to listen to this testimony by this former Jehovah's Witness because this is very telling. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I knew about this. I, I knew. Everybody, it was in the Proclaimers book. Everybody knew. It, we just chopped up to new light. In 1914, uh, and the pyramids, he knew that we knew that the world was going to end. He, we knew that he said the world was going to end in 1914. We knew that the pyramid was uh, part of the calculation that he used to come up with 1914. But of course, they did away with that teaching and they did the new light. But that moment that I had of clarity, that moment that I just realized it was all baloney. Uh, all those, all that. Yeah, it's interesting that he mentioned new light. That's the mantra that these Gnostics always like to bring out with these new religions. The SDA said the same thing, that there was new light once the prophecy of William Miller didn't come to pass. And that's the same thing you see here. And here is the testimony of a Jehovah's Witnesses who's actually explaining it. Stuff that I read about came back to me at that moment. Even like I would uh, look it up on different literature that wasn't Jehovah's Witnesses and I see, oh man, I would go to the library and I'd look at the stuff that they'd say, the bad things, every once in a while and I would just chalk and push it aside. But at the end of the day, it, at that moment, what I knew deep down inside uh, came out and uh, it was that moment where I was like, oh, this is it. And Deshana told me, what, babe? It's like Big Brother. That moment I snapped out of it. Yep, that's it. And that's why we're making this video, because these cults produce a certain type of mind control where guys like Russell here, who are doing their secret teachings and promoting their hand signs, they like to control the public with these false religions and that's why it's so important to understand that this stuff needs to be investigated by Jehovah's Witnesses and we hope this information that we've presented here and linking all this stuff is helpful for you we'll leave links in the description so you can go investigate these things and see for yourself what's really going on and find out that the biblical truth that Jesus Christ is eternal God. He said in the correct translation of John chapter 10, verse 30, that he and the Father were one. And so the Arian heresy of Jesus being a created being or an angel is an error. And these are the people that are bringing out the errors. And these are the people that you have to beware of. And until next time, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time.